So let's look at a vulnerability for which no CV was filed in Microsoft Moo. So Moo is an open source customized and hardened implementation of the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface or UEFI, EFI, Extensible Firmware Interface, Developer Kit 2, EDK2. So EFI was the abbreviation before Unified UEFI. Anyways, uh, Project Moo is the basis for Microsoft Surface tablets. It's what they use as their firmware. So to understand this vulnerability, you need to know a little bit about system management mode, which is a special processor mode on Intel systems that's invoked by a special type of interrupt called a system management interrupt. And when it's invoked, then the code that's in the special system management RAM, SM RAM, runs and performs, you guessed it, system management. So the type of system management referred to here is things like handling power management or oftentimes on modern systems, some sort of security functionality. Now, historically, SMM has been the target of many attacks because it had unchecked access to all of RAM, which meant that if you could break into SMM, you could scribble all over kernels and hypervisors. So it was seen as extremely powerful. And because of this, because it was a little bit overprivileged and undersecured, there had been past efforts by Intel to specify a way to deprivilege it by using things like virtualization and wrap the entire SMM in its own virtual machine and tell that virtual machine to talk to another virtual machine on your host OS, your main operating system and virtualization. But of course, you know, bare metal virtualization is not used most places, although, you know, Microsoft is starting to do that with Hyper-V, but historically it didn't exist. And that's why this mechanism didn't get widespread adoption. So in more recent Intel CPUs, they tried to add a new mechanism for deprivileging that didn't require that firmware makers built a whole hypervisor for SMM. And this is providing a little bit simpler and better way to try to restrict the access that SMM has. So there's a nice uh, paper by Intel called System Resource Defense, which you can check that out. Now, from our Architecture 4001 class where we talk about SMM, we're going to uh, visualize the SMM attacker as dark sonic here. And SMM is a dark place because basically uh, it is not inspectable when the system is running. It's typically locked down and you literally can't see what's in there unless you're already in there. But if an attacker goes and reverse engineers the code that they know is going to be in there, then they could, for instance, exploit it and break in. So if they can get into here, then they have unmitigated access to everywhere. And of course, everywhere contains your user space, kernel space, and hypervisor code. So let's say that Dark Sonic broke into SMM. He can now write all over memory everywhere and compromise your hypervisor, for instance. But if the vendor is using this new mechanism to deprivilege SMM, it essentially breaks it up into a user space kernel space separation as we normally have in operating systems. And now when Dark Sonic tries to write some memory, it is going to be denied and tries to write somewhere else and it's denied. And only a small little area of memory will be allowed for SMM to write out to. And in so doing, that has effectively deprivileged it so it can no longer scribble over everything everywhere. But of course, because it's a user space kernel space separation, Dark Sonic will be able to interact with some sort of kernel interface and some sort of kernel services. And this could potentially be used for privilege escalating up into the notional kernel, at which point Dark Sonic will once again have unmitigated access to everywhere, potentially. So this particular vulnerability was found in Microsoft's Moo implementation because they had graciously actually put it as open source, right? So Moo is an open source implementation where Microsoft's saying, you know, dear other vendors, please use this hardened thing. It'll be a lot better for everyone. The expectation is that if anyone else tries to implement this user space kernel separation in SMM, it will be a closed source and vendor specific implementation. But basically this is a nice sort of reference implementation because you can imagine that other implementations will look very similar to it. So in keeping with typical user space kernel space separation, there's going to be things like using page table permissions to stop the user space code from writing to the kernel. There's also going to be system calls as a interface between user space and kernel space. Now for the purposes of finding this flaw, you should assume that the attacker already successfully broke into user space and now they're trying to privilege escalate into kernel space by using a race condition. 
So I've got this code here that's going to be up on the website. So you can go take a look at that and find the flaw. You can also check out the entire code if you'd like. Again, it's open source. But you need to find the flaw here, something having to do with a race condition. And as just a uh, little bit of a visualization for you to recognize what's happening here, we've got our user space, we've got our kernel space, there's interface via system call, and there will be references to things like EFI GUIDs, which are globally unique identifiers, which are 16-byte values, and there'll be some utilization in system calls of context data. So just to say that, you know, this data starts in user space and then is referenced elsewhere. All right, go find the flaw.